Good evening to you beginning option traders and subscribers. This is Scott Gillum with your option basic lesson number one. <clears throat> We're going to do an introduction to options. Before I begin, I need to remind everybody that all rights are reserved and copyrighted for a shadow trader. That means the content in this presentation is presented for educational purposes only. It should not be considered as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Therefore, information is in no way considered an investment advice. Trading of options involves risk and may not be suitable for all investors. All rights and obligations of the options instruments should be fully understood by you, the individual investor, before entering any trade. All right, topics for today. We're going to define what an option is. We're going to dive a little bit deeper and see if we can understand the options and the options chains. We're going to talk about the trading instrument itself. There's only four of them. We'll go through that. Some terminology and then something called assignment and exercise, which means you either take or give up shares on your option contract. All right, what are options? Well, an option is a, and this is very, very much you should understand, a legal financial contract between you, one, the one party, and the other party, a buyer and a seller. All right, a buyer is one who buys the option. He's the owner. And the seller is the other side of the transaction. There are only two types of options that you we, that we use, and those are called the call option or the put option. Now, backing up, what is an option itself? Well, it's a derivative. It's a derivative of an underlying equity. It's an option to buy or an option to sell shares of that underlying equity that the option is four. They only comprise one category of the derivative. Other derivatives are futures, swaps, forward contracts, metals, those types of things. All right, at the bottom, the value of an option will change as the price of the underlying equity changes. Therefore, it is tied directly to the equity pricing. And I've given you an example at the bottom. All right, going on. They differ from equities in, in several, several ways. There are no limits to the amount of contracts that can be in the market at any point in time. Whereas equities have a cap on their amount of shares that are issued. Companies themselves do not issue the options. They are created by market makers. They are created by the marketplace. They are created by demand. They also have, as you saw in the example of the chicken coupon, they also have a limited time that they are effective for called a time horizon or an expiration point. Of note, not all equities or securities have options and not all options and option chains are created equal. Most of the pricing of options is determined by market conditions. How much is my stock going to move? That depends on how much the options are going to be priced at. How many people are interested in my options? That's going to determine the, the, what's called the spread, the bid and ask differential. So it's determined by market conditions within the confines of how formulations are used to determine a fair valuation, bringing buyers and sellers together. All right, let's go and define some terminology. The call option. The call option is a buyer of an option and it has 
the category of a right to buy. Not category, but the right to buy tied to it. So we have the right to buy the underlying equity for the dollar value of the strike between the time that you're initiating the trade to its expiration date. On the other side of this transaction is the call seller. Well, the call seller has taken on the obligation to sell or to give up shares of that underlying equity for the same strike and within the same time frame. We also have the other side of the coin called the put option. Put option carries, again, the right to sell. You have a right to sell the underlying equity for the dollar value of the strike within that time frame to expiration. And the put option seller carries the obligation to buy. Once again, an option as a legal binding contract requires both a buyer and a seller for it to exist. Side note here, when you see volume on the option chains, this volume is that buy and sell as a single entity. All right, option flavor. Nothing to do with geography. We've got American style options. These are on underlying stocks and ETFs, typically, such as Apple, Netflix, The Spy, etc. This terminology, <clears throat> pardon me, exercise, which means that we will ask to buy, have our right to buy that underlying. We can do that at any time, 24-7. The expiration on these equities, typically it's on a Friday at the market close. Settlement, if you exercise your right, you're going to settle in the equity itself or shares of the equity or the underlying ETF. Settlement price. Well, that's the price of the equity determined after the market closes. Your strike tells you what you're going to buy it for. Now, the other flavor of options, other style, is called European style. These are cash settled indices. No shares, just cash such as the SPX, the NDX, DJX, and such. Exercise of these options can only be done at expiration. Expirations, well, this is old. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, morning, afternoon. They have multiple expirations, so be wary when you're looking at European style options that you have the correct expiration day and time of day. Their settlement, their settlement is always in cash. The settlement, well the prices of the index components are determined on a at the close option they'll be determined at a settlement price upon close of business of that day. There are differences in taxes between American and European options. You need to consult your tax consultant as I am not one of those. All right, let's talk about some option terms. The bid, you'll see this talked about a lot. This is the value at which you sell an option to either open or close that means open a new position or close an existing position. You can think of this as the wholesale price. The term ask. Well, if we've got wholesale, we also have retail. 
This is the value at which you're going to buy an option, either to open or close a position. Volume. These are the number of contracts that have exchanged hands. Not traded, but exchanged hands. You always have a buyer and a seller. This is generated by option activity at various member sites. The term open interest, often confused. Open interest changes only once a day and is posted at the beginning of the day of trading and does not change throughout that day. It's the number of outstanding contracts still in existence for a particular equity, for a particular expiration and strike. It's maintained by the Options Clearing Corporation, and here it says, and I'll read it again, does not change during the trading day. It's recalculated before the market opens and reflects the net changes from the prior day. An expiration series. This refers to the cycle, typically month, could be weekly, of when the option expires. There are equities with monthly only listings. There are equities with weekly listings. And then, as I said before, on the European style, we have multiple day listings for them, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And now those have bled over into the American style for certain equity or certain ETFs, such as the SPY, the IWM, the, the uh, QQQ. The expiration date itself, this is the date at which the, the option totally ceases to exist. The expiration day for monthly equity and index options is the third Friday of the expiration month, called typically OPEX. Weekly and quarterly options are also out there on certain equities and ETFs, and they expire on their Friday. Strike price. This is the dollar value that the equity that you are looking at will be bought or sold if there is an exercise or an assignment. Strike price is also known as the exercise price. Here's a look at an option chain. All right, calls and puts. You'll see that calls and puts are broken apart. Calls on the left, puts on the right. In the middle, oops, in the middle, we have what's called the expiration date. So there's your date that these expire. To the left of that and right of that, you'll see different numbers. The strike price, that is your value that you'll either buy or sell the equity. Bid and ask for both calls and puts. Then there's a column for volume and a column for open interest. As you can see by the slide, this is for an April 18, 2019 option chain. And then below it in purple, You've got the next week, the 26th of April, then the following week, the 3rd of May, the week after that, the 10th of May, and the last one on there is the 17 May option chain, but it's in black. That designates that it's a monthly expiration. All right, let's take a look at how option prices are determined. We've got an option value, so what forces are determining the options price. Well, Paramount is what strike you're looking at. Am I going to buy it for 185? Am I going to buy it for 200? Am I going to buy it for 250? What's the price of the underlying equity? How much time have I got to expiration? Is it two days? Is it 10 days? Is it two months? 
how much volatility or expected move is involved in the option. Is there an interest rate that I need to understand to carry forward? Right now, that's not a factor. As the Fed raises their rates, this becomes a factor. Last but not least, does the underlying equity have a dividend that will be paid during the time of my uh, option that I hold? That will affect and actually reduce the option pricing. All right, some of the calculations that go into making an option value. Based upon the stock price, we have the Greek called delta. This is the calculation of how much the option will move for the first dollar of movement of the underlying equity. Well, stocks don't just move by a dollar and then stop. They move continually. There's another Greek or another mathematical calculation that goes into the pricing that determines how much delta changes as the price changes from $1 to $2 and so on and so on. That's called gamma. Now, as we go along in time, the value of the equity changes changes due to time and this is the Greek called theta. The market is not stagnant which means it has amplitude each and every day based upon inputs and that is the implied volatility and the Greek that determines that or measures that is vega. An interest rate Greek that we really don't look at now, but I'll let you know, is named Rho. So there are your five Greeks, or mathematical calculations, that go into formulating the price of the option for the underlying equity. All right, continuing on with terms, let's talk about in the money options. For example, a call option, the right to buy the equity. A call option is in the money, or ITM, if the current market value of the equity, that means the price of the stock, is above, is greater than the strike of your price option. For example, current price of XYZ is 50 bucks, and I have a 45 call option that I've bought. I have the right to buy XYZ at 45, but it's trading at $50. It has true or hard value called in or pardon, yeah, intrinsic value of $5. So it's in the money by $5. Another term that you'll hear is at the money. This is when the stock price is basically at the same price as your strike price. And then we have the third one called out of the money. When the strike price of the call option is above or greater than the current market value of the equity. For example, once again, XYZ trading at $50 and you own a 55 strike call. Well, you're out of the money by $5. Now, I only gave you the call side. The put side is just the mirror image. Big question for you new traders is why you should choose options. Well, they allow you to profit from equity movements without equity ownership, i.e. less capital. They're also a leverage instrument for that capital because options control the same amount of shares as the equity 
but for less of a cost. They can generate a greater return on investment. By combining trading options, you can create what are called spread trades that can significantly reduce risk and or improve the results. Now, ownership, option ownership, once purchased, is active for 24 by 7. So you can act upon ownership of your options, that's puts or calls, any time of the day up until the expiration time. Okay, remember that long options can be exercised only by the owner, only by the person that bought the long option. This means that the holder of the long option is exercising their right to buy or sell the underlying equity. So for a call option, a long call being exercised allows the holder to buy the underlying equity for that strike price or dollar value before the exercise, pardon me, before the expiration date. On the put side, a long put owner that exercises his rights allows him to sell the underlying equity or get it out of his portfolio at that strike price. If you're a seller of options, so you're short the option, short options will only be assigned as a result of the long option being exercised. It's not completely 100% that you're going to get exercised if your short option goes in the money. Yet, once assigned, those uh, that option, you are obligated to follow through on it, either to give up your equity or to take on the equity. So, a short call seller once assigned, uh, is obligates you to sell your underlying equity to the other party. A short put seller, once assigned, is obligating you to buy the underlying equity. All right. Let's go through a little graphic about opening a contract and then we'll slip into the assignment process. All right, I'm the option buyer. I'm looking at something I want to buy. All right, then I go out and I say, okay, on the platform, I buy XYZ, strike 100 for $1.50. I hit the button on my Thinkorswim platform. It doesn't go to a person directly. It goes to an exchange. There are over 17 of these exchanges. Well, the exchange then says, okay, I've got a buy order in front of me. So the exchange then looks out and says, all right, we look for a seller. Well, the option seller, on it could be the same platform or a different platform, is looking to sell the same equity and strike an expiration that you want to buy. So he makes his button push. And that goes to the exchange as well. The contract is now complete. That information then is passed on to the Options Clearing Corporation. And it's marked as an open contract. A single open contract. All right. Now let's say that as the option buyer, I want to exercise my long option. Well, here's where, where it gets kind of tricky. I say, I want to buy this equity. I want to buy XYZ and I want to buy it for the price that I agreed to. So I push the button for exercise. It does not go to an exchange. That information goes to the Option Clearing Corporation. The Option Clearing Corporation then looks at its data and says, aha, I see that Mr. Option Seller over here has the same option. 
I'm going to send him a notice that he's been assigned and that he has to give up his shares to satisfy your exercise. And that's how the process works on a very simplistic basis. All right, let's do some review. The option contract is a legal contract between two parties designed for the transfer of wealth. Contracts are opened or closed. They are not traded. Long options are bought to open and sold to close. Short options are sold to open and bought to close. Long options have rights while short options carry obligations. The long call provides the option buyer the right to buy the underlying equity for the strike price or the dollar value within the time frame of the option. The short call has the you as the seller obligated to sell the equity for the dollar value of the, of the equity at the strike price within the lifespan of that option. Going on to the puts. The long put provides the buyer the right to sell its equity and the short put obligates the buyer, or pardon me, the, the seller. It should say seller in there, sorry. Obligates you, the seller of this put, that you have to take on or buy the equity and put it in your portfolio. 